Hi, I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for 240 months and now I teach art for a living. I've never been a fan of doing art studies or studies in general for that matter. I have ADD, so that probably doesn't help. But still, as a pro, I figured I didn't really have a choice unless I wanted a really short career. So I found a process that allows me to still study to this day, like these are recent. And in this week's YouTube Art School episode, I'll show you exactly how I study drawing, what's worked for me, and how that actually helps me and maybe you too, to learn faster than ever before. Very valuable information, maybe. Uh oh, quickly, we're late for class. Class is in session. Pay attention. Studying is a skill. Sure, you study to learn something, to learn skills, but the act of studying itself can improve too. You can study to study better. What? As an art teacher, I've been doing a lot of that in recent years, and it's made a huge impact on how I teach, of course, but also how I learn, how fast I learn. In this class, I'll show you my study process so that you can hopefully get some tips out of it to make your own studies better faster. I've tried so many different ways over the years and uh, this is what's worked best for me. What I found consistently delivers the best results. Now I'll just say, if you're starting from zero, this probably won't help you. So I would save it for later. For this, you'll need at least some level of knowledge of the art fundamentals, basically enough knowledge to be self-critical. But yeah, if you're not there yet and you're looking to get started, definitely look for my beginner playlist on the channel. There's a lot of stuff in there. And also check out my art program if you're really serious about your art, but um, more on that later. Anyways, how I study art can be broken up in three main steps. So here's step number one. As a basic rule, I never go into anything anymore, at least thinking that I need to study. My art studies always come as a result of a problem that I'm facing. Always a problem based approach. 99% of the time, I'll start a new drawing, a new painting, and I'll go into it with the assumption that I can do everything from imagination without reference. That's rarely the case, of course. And this is what the start of my studies might be like. I'll run into a problem, like not being able to draw the folds in a particular angle, having issues maybe with the facial features, some areas of the character's anatomy foreshortened, or maybe I'm drawing an armor, a prop, and I'm not familiar with the with what it should look like. Whatever it is, in any of those cases, I'll always try to push as far as I can draw using what I know or what my best guess might be. But having found my problem, a figurative wall that I've yet to climb over, it'll be time to move on to the second step. And the first step is all about isolating the problem, really figuring out how much I know and then what exactly I don't know. Now, when it comes to the second step, it's all about observation. I know a lot of artists will just find the exact thing that they need for their specific drawing, you know, like a single reference to copy from maybe and then call it done and move on and that's fine. But in my case, since I don't dedicate time to pure studies like a lot of artists do, I like to spend a little longer on the problem that I've discovered to really make sure that anything similar won't be a problem next time. To do this, I always find a bunch of references from real life, but also from artists that I think are doing that specific thing better than me. It's important to have a mix of both. The real life references show me what it should look like, while the artist references will show me ways to simplify that reference. It basically shows me what other artists have found to be valuable information, you know, from similar real life references. And that's a huge time saver. I think of it as like learning the best talents build in an RPG game like Diablo, maybe, or learning cool weapon combinations or vehicle builds in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It's very likely I would have eventually discovered the same or, or something equivalent on my own with enough time. But if I don't have to and I can simply reuse the discovery of a number of other artists, then I save myself a huge amount of time. Just like those examples, I'll always end up making modifications and tweaking things to my liking. But, you know, the trial and error period is dramatically reduced that way. And now that I have references in hand, I just go in and start drawing. Wait, no, not yet. Like I just mentioned a minute ago, the second step is all about observation. With my references in hand, I'll usually spend a minimum of five to 10 minutes just sitting there and observing. Not just looking at my refs, but actively observing everything about it. That's a really long time to just be looking at something, but it's a crucial step. And I think it's really been a game changer for me 
the more I started doing this. I'll say maybe like a few years ago, not that long ago. For this step to be as valuable, however, it's crucial that I spend enough time on step one, that I tried my best to draw using everything I know up until I really hit the wall. And the reason step one is key is because all of that time I spent wondering if what I'm doing is right, erasing, trying again, that all serves to highlight what I should be observing better. It's like a clear piece that's missing in my puzzle, and now I'm searching for it as I observe. I know what I'm looking for. And it's always tempting to just go in and draw already, but I'll always force myself to spend some extra time observing. One trick that I like to use is looking at a reference, closing my eyes and trying to imagine it in as much detail as possible. Then I'll open my eyes and again repeat the process until my mental image is clear enough. After a while, I'll start to draw what I see, drawing the reference from different angles, pulling more references if needed, testing different ways to draw and simplify those references, then go back to observing some more, and then do this over and over again, usually filling up the equivalent of like a sketchbook page full of studies. No guessing here though, only copying what I see from the references. And by the way, topics like these, like how to learn better, the art fundamentals that you would need to know for this study method to work. It's all content that I teach in my art program, along with a variety of topics like how to draw characters, environments, props, animals and creatures, perspective, anatomy, storytelling, composition, world building, and much, much more. This month, I'm celebrating five years of art school, and you'll be able to get my full program at a huge discount all month long before the price goes up next month. You can check it out with the link in the video description below. You'll find reviews, student comments and all of the information that you might need to decide. It's everything you would need to draw whatever your mind can imagine. All right, with that plug over, time to move on to step number three. At this point, I should have a much better grasp on the problem. I've observed a lot, I practiced a lot. Now it's time to try and wing it. Draw it from memory, using all of that fresh, new information that I just filled my brain with, my visual library with. I'll usually aim at filling a second page full of drawings, you know, much like step number one, trying to do most of the work without relying on the references this time. The main difference will be that I'll keep my references nearby and refer back to them every single time that I'm not 100% sure of myself. In a way, it's a mix between like step one and step two. Step three is all about polishing my knowledge, my understanding of what I'm drawing. Having done step two, I'm usually much more confident in my ability by now, but it's too early to think that I've studied enough. I don't know if you're familiar with the four levels of understanding. Unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and unconscious competence. When learning a new skill, we all start completely oblivious to the amount of knowledge that we need to acquire to be any good at it. It only becomes more obvious after a good amount of practice. From there, we practice some more until things become easier, under control, and then finally, with enough repetition, we might become a master at it, reaching a level where it's so easy that you can do, you know, something else at the same time. Like drawing a simple square, maybe, or writing your name. I don't have many art skills that I can think of that are at that last level, but the third level, conscious competence, is usually what I aim for for this whole three-step process of study. In my case, I'm not a complete beginner, so I'll usually start as consciously incompetent at step one, and step two and three serve to bring me up to the level of conscious competence. Once I'm done with step three, I'll usually find myself there, you know, consciously competent enough that I can now draw the thing that I was having problems with from imagination, from memory, without having to rely on references in the future. That's always my goal. And what's cool with targeted studies like these is that moving forward, I'll always unconsciously observe the thing that I was studying more, constantly reinforcing my understanding. And that's just the Bader meinhof phenomenon or the frequency illusion at play where something that you recently learned about will suddenly seem to appear everywhere. It's a real thing, and I'm sure that you've experienced it many times before, but that only happens to me in this context when I give enough time to my three-step process, you know, as long as I don't rush through. And that's going to be it for this week's class. But yeah, that's how I study drawing. That's how I study art. Doing this, I've never learned faster in my life, so I hope you give it a shot, either now or later when it makes more sense for you. If, you know, you don't already do this, of course. And I hope that was helpful or insightful at least. And if you've been a good student and followed until the end, well, you win freebies. Check out the video description for a link to download one of my two custom brush sets. It includes the liner brush that I've used for all of today's drawings. It's my favorite brush. Use it responsibly. And I'll see you in next week's class.